equity and respect the Muhammadan model, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through ihsan, love, and unconditional compassion necessitates that we refrain in both public and private life from inflicting pain, not just onto humans, but onto animals. You know the hadith of Abdullah is the sahih about the woman that was punished for hurting a cat. She prevented the cat from eating and was torturing the cat. The hadith says that this person will be punished for punishing a cat, not just a human being. The Muhammadan source of mercy impels us that acting or speaking violently out of spite, chauvinism, or self-interest, or to impoverish, exploit, or deny basic rights to anybody, and to incite hatred by denigrating others, even our enemies, is a denial of our common humanity as, a ch as children of Adam and a breach to our Islamic values and principles. Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi insisted in many ways to call us all the children of Adam. We may be different colors, different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages, different bahasa. I'm just putting an S at the end. I don't know if that's how you make it plural, but anyway. Bahasa, bahasa? Okay. <laughs> I learned another word. Thanks for that. Thank you. We may be different backgrounds, different languages, different ethnicities, different creeds. But he's telling us, at the end of the day, we are one people. Kunz from the Adam. All of you are from Adam. Wa Adam in Turah. And Adam is from the lake. <coughs> the prophetic model shows us when we compare ourselves to it today that we fail to live up to it. Some of us, in fact, increase the sum of human misery in the name of religion itself. Hence the urgency for reform within ourselves. To establish the caliphate of Allah within ourselves before we impose it on others. It's always, correction always starts at home before it can be imposed or even transferred to others. Let me finish with a few things. The Muhammadan source, unconditional mercy and compassion and love, tells us that we all must work hard to restore unconditional compassion and love as the central theme of our morality and religion, Islam. I always say the example of Imam Ghazali as a model in modern scholarship needs to be looked at because it's urgently needed today in an environment that's toxic. It's buffering. Today, there's hate and only love can extinguish hate. We must return to the ancient principle that our deen, our religion, brought forth. That is, any interpretation of our deen, Quran or Sunnah, that breeds extremism, whether it's violent or nonviolent. Some extremism is violent, some is nonviolent. I always say the reason for violent extremism is nonviolent extremism in the first place. Therefore, any interpretation of the deen that breeds extremism, hatred, or disdain is flat out illegitimate. That's not what the deen says. That's your interpretation of the deen, and that's wrong. To ensure that our youth are given accurate and respectful information. Today, we have a need to go back to the concept of tarbiyah that was done in the old days by our Muslim caliphs and our Muslim rulers and our prophets before them. And that means, tarbiyah and the religion means we need to move from ritual to spiritual. It's not about ritual. 
Rituals are meaningless if they don't move you to spiritual. We need to move from information to transformation. That salah or that information that you're reading in the Quran, if it doesn't transform you, you haven't even started. We need to encourage positive appreciation of critical thinking within, again, a moderate framework. As Muslims, the Muhammadan compassion that is unlimited as, as a creation impels us to cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all living things. All living things. Finally, we urgently need to make this Muhammadan example وسلم, as our guiding light in this world. Love and unconditional compassion must be made a clear, luminous, and dynamic force in our daily life today, in our masajid, in our schools, in our factories, in our universities, in, where, in our homes, first and foremost. Rooted in a divine facilitation to transcend selfishness, this Muhammadan model of love and unconditional compassion can break down political, dogmatic, ideological, and even religious boundaries. It is essential to human relationships and a fulfilled humanity. It's the path to enlightenment. It's too heavy for us to travel to Allah with all these weights, such as envy, uh, self-interests, uh, hatred, grudges, it's too heavy. We have to drop them to go lightweight. Travel to Allah spiritually requires lightweight travel. Clean heart, that is. Not rendering our heart into a garbage can, in a sense. Today, the path of the Prophet وسلم, as he ruled through unconditional compassion and love, is our path to enlightenment. And it's this, this indispensable to the creation of a just and peaceful global community. Only light can extinguish darkness, and only love can heal the soul. Thank you so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa Thank you. Thank you, Sidi. Alhamdulillah. This indeed is a fitting tribute and offering on behalf of the ulama to Our Majesty the Sultan. Alhamdulillah, we can stand happily confident among the armed forces with their tattoo and the school children two weeks ago. And uh, thank you indeed very much. The Sheikh has given us potted history of our role models from our tradition, from the prophetic Khulafa, from Adam as the force of construction, to David as the epitome of justice, to Suleiman as the um, meticulous ruler, and to Yusuf salam, who served humanity and indeed all the other Khulafa from Abu Bakr, that noble ruler, that flexible ruler, to Salahuddin Ayyubi, the gentleman, scholar and ruler, to Muhammad al-Fatih who defended religious freedom for, for others, to Omar in his conscientiousness and consciousness uh, for God, to Uthman with his patience and indeed to Ali in his perseverance in the face of trials and tribulations. But most important of all, indeed, our blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his undiluted, indeed, indeed, unconditional compassion unto the world. So thank you, Shaykh, indeed, for this gift, for this nasihat al-muluk to our king. In the best tradition of what the Germans call Flugenspiegel, the advice to princes, indeed. So you do complete our coronation, and sorry, our enthronement rituals here, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Shaykh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the point where we now begin um, our intellectual discussions here, and it's open to um, the audience to the floor to ask questions. So just before I open to the floor to um, questions, I thought, Sheikh, since you've given really a, both a potted history and also indeed a potted lesson, if you like, of all the other advice given by all the various Muslim rulers, I thought I wanted to pick your brains on just this one interesting thing, and perhaps if you can then give advice on this. 
Given the fact that the enthronement of our Sultan coincides this year with the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta, the famous uh, you know, tradition from the Western tradition, particularly to remind us all of the importance of a constitutional monarchy, that the ruler rules within certain limitations of the law, to rule with just, that the ruler is not an absolute ruler, that in the Islamic tradition, we have two hadith, right? Two hadith that are at one attention with the other. So the one hadith is the very famous hadith narrated by Imam Bayhaqi, as sultan zillullahi fil ard That the sultan is God's shadow on earth. A very interesting hadith because in this hadith, Muslims see that the authority of the sultan is of divine provenance. That the authority of the Sultan, in fact, is derived from the divine source. Hence, the rayat, the subjects, the citizens, has to obey the Sultan. On the other hand, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in a hadith of your, in a since he told me over dinner, your favorite muhadith, as a hadith scholar himself, of course, Sheikh. Imam Tirmidhi narrated this rather interesting hadith. In Ahabba al Nasi min Allahi wa adnahum minhu majlisa imamun adil wa abhad al Nasi min Allahi wa abaduhum minhu majlisa imamun jahil. That the most loved in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next world and the one who will be place closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next world is the Sultan, the ruler who is just. Whereas the most hated of human beings in the next world and the one who will be placed furthest away from God is the ruler who is unjust, the unjust ruler. So here we have two hadith very interestingly in the Islamic tradition. I mean I would see this as an example of it embodies the Islamic version of what we would in the West call Magna Carta, actually. And given that, mashallah, with the enthronement of our Sultan coincides with the 800th anniversary of the Magna Carta that the people in the West are so proud of, <laughs> I'd like you to perhaps just give your own tafakkur and reflections on this too, as, as, a, as your own gift to our Sultan, mashallah. Thank you. I don't see contradiction between them. In fact, I see them very complementary in a sense. Uh, because you see, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created human beings perfectly imperfect. Sorry. Nice Some problems. of you are perfect out there. Your Majesty. <laughs> uh, perfectly imperfect. That's a cool. Perfectly imperfect. We are a perfect creation. But because we are a creation, we are imperfect being a creation. Because of that, we have to understand that. The Sultan or the ruler or the Caliph does the best they can based on the circumstances they can. And that's perfectly imperfect or imperfectly perfect, whatever you like. And therefore, there is no problem when you look at it this way. Capacitating someone beyond what they can is something Allah did not do. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa musra. Allah only capacitates a soul that which it is capacitated to do, it can do, it's able to do. With that is the question, are you doing your best? If you're doing your best, you are sitting on the throne of love. That's the throne of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and those who follow his footsteps. It's the throne of love that Imam Adil did the best thing he did he could, and therefore their love is enthroned in the hearts of people without needing a throne. And Allah knows best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good answer for this tutorial, I must say. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Now um, uh, the. Uh, 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 I will open now the uh, uh, 